Is the Russian military superior to the American military? Would the Russian military win World War III against America? Um, this is a video that is just based purely on facts that I want you to think about. A bunch of notes written out for this one, things I looked up. I will be putting them on screen so you can see them for yourself. And uh, this is not a thing It's you know, get emotions involved and, well, I'm a loyal American, well, I'm, I'm for Russia or whatever. This is just looking at facts, okay? I am an American, born and raised here. Ancestors came here in 1720. I'm not anti-American, believe me. I'm not pro-Russian. I'm not saying I'd like Russia to take over America and run this country or anything else of the kind. I'm just looking at things and how things are stacking up for World War III. And I'm uh, very much concerned for America because I don't think America is going to get through this one. Um, <clears throat> okay, one of the big attacks I've heard on the thing of Russia, the Russian military, they'll say, well, um, you know, Russia's not a threat at all because they've been, they still haven't defeated Ukraine. Um, well, that's not the intent of the war over there. Okay, if they wanted to take over Ukraine, you encircle the country, you cut off supplies coming into it, everything else. Um, they're not trying to take over Ukraine. They're trying to get the NATO forces, the fascist Nazi forces out of Ukraine. That's what Vladimir Putin said in his Tucker Carlson interview, where they did that interview together. He does not want to take over all of Europe. Okay, that's a lie that keeps getting spread by people here in America, and it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Um, he's not some kind of a Adolf Hitler that wants to take the entire world over or whatever else. They just are saying in the Soviet Union, Ukraine was part of it, and you know, NATO could not get real close to Russia with nuclear weapons. Now with Ukraine um, being in the back pocket of NATO, they can position their nuclear weapons right there in Ukraine, which is a major threat to Russia. Um, again, just think of it, divorce yourself from the emotions of the whole thing and say, you know, America wouldn't put up with it, with what we're expecting Russia to put up with. You don't want your enemy to be able to put nuclear weapons right next door to you. That's what the war in Ukraine is about. Russia saying uh, we need to get rid of this NATO stuff, this aggression and everything else. And you have to remember too that they actually had um, conditions of peace drawn up before um, the war even got started over there. The invasion, excuse me. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. So um, to say that Russia is trying to take over all of Europe, that's nonsense. That's stupid. Um, but I've heard that, and they'll say, well, you know, Russia is such a failure, they can't even take down Ukraine, and what a bunch of losers. Well, let's think about this for a minute. Let's compare the two, okay? What was the most recent war that America withdrew from? That would have been the war in Afghanistan. All right, which ironically, you know, if you know anything about history, Russia was there before America uh, doing some things over there. And um, so Afghanistan's not really a good place to try to take over, I guess. <laughs> Moral of the story there. But the American occupation, we'll say, or the thing that happened over there in Afghanistan, it went from October the 7th, 2001 to August the 30th of 2021. All right, so just about 20 years. Uh, that's a long time to be at a in a other country, you know, with war and whatever else. Um, the numbers that I was able to find online: 70,000 Afghan military and police dead, 46,319 Afghan civilians, which they say, you know, that's probably a lot more than that. I'm sure it was a lot more than 46,000 civilians dead and 53,000 opposition fighters dead. Okay, so let's just go with the total numbers there of how many people died in that 20 year occupation. That'd be about 169,319 total deaths. Um, and death is one of the uh, key factors in war. How many of the enemy have we killed? How many of our own men have we lost? That's just the way it is. Again. Oh, it's the emotional toll and the horrors of war. Yeah, I get it. I understand. It's a terrible thing. But you have to look at things just from a scientific perspective here. All right. 
So not even 170,000 dead according to their own numbers. Um, <clears throat> and yet you compare that to the numbers right now coming out of Ukraine, and there's a lot of contradictory numbers there. I mean, I'm, I looked up some stuff from the U.S. government, and they're saying barely any you know, Ukrainian soldiers died. It's all the Russians. They're dying in large numbers. Then you get uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor, which I, I like a lot of his stuff that he puts out. And he said that uh, there's 600,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers. Now, how can you determine who's right? Because you get people that would say, well, you know, McGregor's just a, yeah, you know, he's a, a great soldier and everything. And yeah, he worked for the Trump campaign or the Trump administration last time. But uh, he's just a conspiracy theorist. He's pro-Russian. He's a Putin lover or whatever else. You know, so I don't trust him. I trust the government's sources. Yeah, the government never lies to us. But uh, let's just go with this for a minute. If uh, the Ukraine has barely lost any men, okay, and they're just destroying Russia, why do they keep needing aid? Why does Zelensky keep coming to the West and leaving with, you know, $60 billion or whatever else? Uh, that doesn't really line up. And why are they just grabbing men off the street? You've seen these videos out there where they, they just are going through and there's some guy going to work or something and they, the Ukrainian soldiers just pull up, grab the guy, throw him in a van and off you go to the front lines. And you know, these guys are being captured by the Russians soldiers and they're, they're saying, yeah, we had you know three days of training before they threw us here into combat. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. You can't pretend that there's not a problem over there. So. Um, is it just a, you know, you know, 70, 80,000 Ukrainians dead or is it 600,000? I would lean more towards 600,000 and that's why they're trying to get the West involved. And again, I showed the video clip the other day of Lindsey Graham saying that, um, there's 10 to $12 trillion worth of rare earth minerals there. And we can't let those fall into the hands of Russia and China. Hmm. So they're connecting Russia and China. And uh, how about the, for all you American military veterans out there that want to side with the military, the U.S. military no matter what, uh, why don't we talk about the fact that America left $7 billion of military hardware, weapons, equipment, whatever else, $7 billion left behind for the people that you were fighting in Afghanistan. Um, that seems almost like a gift to the enemy. Hey, we're going to be pulling out of the war now and uh, we're just going to leave real quickly. And um, we'll just leave a bunch of Black Hawk helicopters and a whole lot of ammunition and guns and you know, everything that you would need to be very powerful. Huh, um, kind of a weird situation there. But uh, our military is better than the Russian military. Uh, no, it's not. Um, Again, uh, get the emotions out of it. And, you know, I know you want to, you have music going through your head right now, you know, God bless America and all this stuff. Uh, but you have to get rid of that and say, I need to be a little bit more logical and rational about this. Um, unfortunately, uh, America is run by some really wicked people. That's why they use a, a depleted uranium as ammunition. Um, oh, it, got, it goes right through the tank armor, you know, and everything. When it gets heated up, it shoots out of the uh, barrels there. And yeah, and then it, it turns into uh, powder and whatever else, and it kills our troops. Slowly kills our troops. I knew a, a Marine sergeant many years ago, and they uh, he came back after the war there and everything, having handled DU rounds. And... Um, <clears throat> And they tried to have him and his wife, they had a, were going to have twins, I guess it was. They, and they, um, they didn't come out very good. I think he said the one came out and it had the little baby had one eye. It was a miscarriage, but um, they were horribly deformed. Um, so, and that's my own personal experience with a, you know, military veteran. And I'm sure that there was probably a lot more stories of 
uh, veterans having all kinds of health issues. Uh, Hidden Wars of Desert Storm, I think is what the documentary was called. Um, just a tragic thing where they <clears throat> um, get into the thing of the soldiers having all sorts of health issues from um, these depleted uranium rounds. You know, and I mean, look at all the wars that this country has been in and how many times they've achieved victory and then they're told to pull out. I mean, over in Vietnam, just all the time they were doing this. I study in Vietnam, the Vietnam War. This makes me sick, you know. They, let's go take this hill. Let's go put a base on this hill, forward operating base, and they, they get it all established and all the great cost to the men, and they get the, the equipment up there, and then they say, oh, the Viet Cong is overwhelming us. Let's get out of here, and they leave everything, just like they did in Afghanistan. Why? Uh, you have to understand a very simple thing about war, all right? especially the ones that America wages. And that is um, every war that America ever waged, uh, going the whole way back to the Civil War, which I'll be bringing out some interesting stuff on that in the future, um, some uh, northern connections to the South during the war, financing things in the South, the Confederacy in other words. But every war in American history since the Civil War has been financed and won by the bankers every single time. They always uh, look to make money. That's why you study the Civil War, and there were so many times that these you know, military men were saying, this is terrible, what are you doing? This is a suicide mission, you're going to get us killed. Um, we can take this battlefield here at Gettysburg, or Antietam, or you know, some of the others, uh, no, pull back. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do that. Oh, just bad communications. No, it was Masonic officers being given orders by the bankers um, to make foolish maneuvers so that they can make more money. Um, bankers like wars to last for a long time. That's how they make lots of money. It's a very sick thing, but it's the truth. And you have to come to the realization of that and take off the uh, rosy uh, patriot glasses. Um, these people don't care about you. You go into the military, you might have a chance of surviving, but more than likely, um, you're going to end up as a statistic. And of course, a Christian, a child of God, you go into, you get drafted or whatever else, you can get into the military and you can maybe survive the thing or something, but um, there's a pretty good chance you won't be. But anyhow, let me get back to the thing here. So we left behind seven billion dollars of military equipment in Afghanistan. I mean, what do you think about that? What do you think about the president here of the United States, Joe Biden, just, you know, making that decision? And it wasn't actually him, but, you know, the people that are behind him, the bankers and uh, those who use usury to make lots of money. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the war in between Russia and Ukraine, the Russo-Ukrainian war, they call it, actually began in 2014. Many people might not know that. February the 20th of 2014, but the actual invasion of Ukraine by Russia began on the 24th of February in 2022. And like I said, there's uh, 600,000 dead. Now, however that works out, you know, there might be, I don't know how many Russian dead there are, how many Ukrainian dead, but I would think it's a lot more Ukrainian than Russian, um, just simply because of their always needing help and things. But I um, heard another guy say the one time, watching a economics thing, and this guy said, uh, the, into stock market stuff and things, and he was saying about how that, you know, America is doing very well, the dollar's not going anywhere, it's doing great. Yeah, well, people right now are, um, a lot of countries that have U.S. Treasury bonds are um, doing whatever they can to get dollars so that they can pay off their treasury bonds. So it looks like the dollar is doing well. It's not. People are just, you know, th those that want to enter into the BRICS countries are trying to get their treasury bonds paid off quickly because they know that America is getting desperate and America wants to confiscate everybody's uh, treasury bonds and things and whatever else. So it's, again, very insane what's going on here. But um, this guy said, this stockbroker guy said that I was watching this thing about, he said, um, 
that uh, America, you know, our military is the biggest military in the world. And I thought, no, it isn't. <laughs> That's not true. That's just a flat out lie that this guy believes. Um, or I don't know if he's lying or if he just believes the lie and is too dumb to really do any kind of research. But I thought, America's military is the biggest in the world? No. Let me give you the numbers here. I'll put this up on screen. Um, the American military has uh, 1,390,000 as far as being in the military. China has 2 million. India has 1,450,000. And according to the, this uh, little chart thing there, Russia has 850,000 soldiers. So, and you can see the other countries too. North Korea's actually got quite a few. But you have the different nations that are involved with BRICS. They dwarf our military. Our military is tiny. And the other NATO countries as well. And, you know, you can say, well, yes, but our technology is better. Our weaponry is better. Everything is better with the American military. We have uh, things really worked out. Okay, but if you know anything about war, um, quality doesn't always uh, beat quantity. And if you just take the three countries there, three of the actual BRICS acronym countries, Russia, India, China, that'd be over 4 million troops more than double the size of the American military. Um, and I'd also like to point out the fact that yes, China has uh, some serious issues with their economy and whatever else, but uh, Russia uh, doesn't have quite the same problems that we do. And I would say that Russian manhood is definitely a lot more, uh, the morale's there more so than America with the problems that we have in our military. Um, with all the you have to go along with the pervert stuff and you get men that are you know not sure if they're women right now and you know all these different things just an abomination in the sight of god but um so there you have it i mean i i can keep going off here with giving you facts and statistics but um it is what it is and again uh i don't know how things are going to work out I can't, you know, I have, as a preacher, the, you know, just say it this way. The way that prophecy works, Bible prophecy, it isn't just some kind of a thing where I'm walking out here in the woods and all of a sudden this beam of light comes down from heaven and, what is it, Lord? And he says, tell the people that, you know, uh, one week from today, um, McDonald's cheeseburgers will be $20 a piece or something. Just being sarcastic there. <laughs> Uh, that's not how prophecy works. The way that prophecy works is, the Bible says we've been given a more sure word of prophecy. So, Jesus Christ comes to the earth and he's walking around and his disciples are showing him the temples and things there in Matthew chapter 24. And he says, you know, that all these things will be thrown down and there won't be one stone left upon another. And that's why the Jews today go to Fort Antonia, not to where the Temple Mount was. And so they bow to the Roman fort. They're over there doing the thing at the, the Wailing Wall and all this stuff. That's not where the temple was. Again, I've done studies on that. But, um, so they, because they want to reject the prophecy of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ prophesies and he says that there would be wars and rumors of wars. That this, all these are the beginning of sorrows. You know, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. You can read it. And you, can, you need to get a King James Bible. If you're lost and you're watching me, you're in the military or whatever else, do yourself a favor, get a King James Bible and just read it. And this, the spirit of prophecy is, you look and you say, okay, this is a prophecy for the end times, the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> Teotihuacan, the Bible talks about that, the Bible defines it. So you look and you say, okay, if I see news items that line up with what Jesus Christ said about the end times, then I know this is matching together, and I can say this, this is what's going to happen. Now, I can't give you exact details, um, because some of that stuff isn't, you know, I don't have it worked out yet. But I can tell you that the American military is not going to make it for this next one. And again, let's go to war. I, I think you're wrong, Brian, I think you're wrong. Okay, what do you think is going to happen when a war starts with America right now? We're 34 trillion in debt. 
uh, they print more money, inflation goes up. I mean, think of it this way. You have a, a bag, and in that bag you have $5,000. And somebody comes along and they say, here's another $1,000. You say, well, the bag barely has any room. What happens? You put more money in, the bag gets bigger. It inflates, okay? Or balloon, we'll say, if, if uh, money was air, not too far from it here in America, but if money was air, you put more air into the balloon, the balloon inflates. So we need to print more money to go to war with Russia and to go to war with China. And, to, you know, then it's going, you're going to hyperinflate the currency here. You're going to destroy the dollar. And like I said, the whole OPEC deal that, that ended June 9th, just a few days ago, a week or so ago here, whatever, um, Saudi Arabia, I think it is, they, they're saying we're not doing business with the dollar anymore. So, I mean, your major changes are coming. And you have to prepare yourself for that. You have to see through the spirit of prophecy, the lens of scripture. Jesus Christ said wars and rumors of wars. There'd be some really bad stuff happening. Get ready for it. Don't say to yourself, you, know, you hear these guys, the, the false prophets out there, and they'll say, oh, America's doing great. Everything's fine. The dollar's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, we have the biggest military in the world. Everything's fine. There's, don't listen to these uh, uh, what's the thing is it fear porn and and um these doom and gloom guys and oh it's just terrible mentally prepare yourself okay lord where am i supposed to go what am i supposed to do you know um we've been um really praying hard about the thing of a, a home should we buy a house should we try to build on the property here i don't know what to do what would make more sense financially um and but, you know, I've been trying to, we've gone and looked at houses and things, and the answer just keeps coming back, no. And I mean a, a definite no. You know, we go into some place, it looks like it'd be decent, we can afford it. Go down to the basement, and the basement wall's caving in. <laughs> okay, no, not happening. Went to a viewing here this past week, and went down into the basement. There was a raccoon down in the basement pulling insulation down. Uh, oh, okay, that's nice. Hey, you got a raccoon down in your basement, you know, here. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I just keep getting a no answer and I have to think to myself, okay, um, I've been upset about it, but I'm starting to have some peace about it because I'm starting to realize, you know, maybe the Lord is trying to keep me flexible here in case I need to move and bug out to some other place. I don't know. And, uh, if you're getting some, what looks like hindrances to prayer, you might be, it might actually be the Lord saying, I need to keep you not fixed in this location here. So just some things to think about. But um, we need to pray, brethren, because uh, this nation has done some very wicked things. And it saddens me to have to say it, but uh, America is going to, will not exist in how many years? I don't know. It, uh, we're heading for some rough times. So, just want to tell the truth about it and because I'm getting sick and tired of seeing people with all these ridiculous things of, oh, you know, America's doing great and, and uh, our military is the most powerful and the biggest and whatever else. Um, America, again, one other point I've made, which I need to make again, and that is, in order to be a great military, you have to have a great industry to back up the great military. You know, we uh, one of the ways we defeated Germany in World War II is because we had factories, auto factories here, that could produce the tanks and the airplanes and all the other things that we used. Uh, World War III comes around, not going to be the same. You say, well, yeah, but we're going to have higher tech weapons and we won't need all the tank production and all the... You still need to produce things. You still uh, can't be shipping out your gunpowder manufacturing to China or your uniform production to China. I was reading a book last night about a woman in World War I and um, family, but you know, they were talking about the mother in World War I and she'd sit around all day sewing up bandages, give them to the local, you know, military office or whatever else so that it could be sent to the front 
for soldiers at the front. Um, how many American people would take their time and their money to do that? I don't think very many. So, but just wanted to put that video out there. I think it's important to realize these things and not to listen to the false prophets that tell you everything's fine. America's not going anywhere. Everything's going to be just wonderful. Um, not true. Not true. So, you can leave your comments and your opinions and things down in the comment section down below. Uh, welcome to the uh, Russians that want to leave comments, as well as the American military that wants to leave comments. Uh, you can fight it out down there in the comment section. <laughs> Please don't use profanity because this is a Christian channel and I don't need to see a lot of cussing and things down there in the comments. Please be civil about it. Um, so, but that will be it. Standing in a spot here where the trees came down in the winter. So, see behind me here, trees are all broken up. Destructive. But uh, that will be it. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.